I'm Don. Welcome to my channel. This channel is supported by all these awesome brands. Also, special thanks to Army Painter for making this video possible. Today, we're painting a lady dwarf miniature from Grimmskald. In this video, we paint the OSL in a different way, a bit more challenging but super fun. Normally, when you paint OSL, you paint all the colors of the miniature and then you add in the OSL. With this one, we did value sketching with blue grays and then I added the colors afterwards. So it's kind of different. It was a bit challenging but again, super fun. So I hope you enjoyed this video as we turn this Grimm's Cold miniature into this. Today, we're using my Red Grass Wet Palette. We start with Deep Ocean Blue, which is one of my fav colors, one of the many fav colors in the Warpaint Fanatic line. This video is not a tutorial on how to paint OSL, because we're actually like painting OSL here in reverse. Normally, when you paint OSL, especially subtle OSL effects on miniatures, you paint the miniatures as is. You paint the main colors or the actual colors of the miniature. Or make it paint or paint it a little bit darker, but still the actual colors. And then you paint in the OSL with the airbrush or with the brush. In this miniature, we started with the ambient lighting, which is basically value sketching with blue grays. Although the blue gray triad is very nice, I find it a little bit too blue for this purpose. I spend too much time on the painting of the value sketching with the blue grays here in the painting of this miniature because I was leisurely building up the colors as I was waiting for new prints from Grimm's Cult and a new like sponsored miniature. I spent like four, maybe five hours on just the value sketching with blue grays, which is too much time because I usually finish a small miniature like this one in about the same time. After painting the value sketching, which is strictly not value sketching because we did not paint with black and white and grays, but I think you get my point. And after painting the value sketching or the ambient lighting, we then add the colors. The most crucial part in this painting is this lava orange. I'm using this color to sketch where I think the effect of the flame or reflection of the flame coming from the torch is hitting the miniature. Now, the problem of blending lava orange towards the blue tones, the blue-gray tones, is that you cannot glaze. Because if you glaze the lava orange, you will come up with a lighter orange. So, I had to paint actual red oranges towards the fall-off. The fall-off is like when the flame, the effect of the flame reflection, gets farther away from the actual source of light, which is the flame. So, it gets redder as it gets farther. After painting the yellows and oranges, which are the effects, the reflection of the flame, towards the ambient lighting, which is the blue grays under painting or base colors, it is now easier to add in more colors. Well, except the armor parts, because the armor parts are reflective. Painting the skin, as pre-highlight and highlight colors via stippling and a few fat glazes was super easy. However, I was so undecided on how to add colors within the armor parts because the armor parts are supposedly reflective. And if it reflects the flame, it will be yellows and oranges too. However, painting highlights away from the flame, which is like moonlighting or ambient lighting, was super easy. It's a matter of just painting more lighter blue grays and even white on some of the non-metallic metal parts. So I do not recommend painting OSL in this manner, but this study, this exercise of painting OSL like this one, was super fun. 
Now, before our final thoughts, a ton of thanks to all you guys, my viewers, and my patrons at Patreon. And of course, special thanks to Army Painter for making this video possible. Like I said in the longer video tutorial version at Patreon, this is not one of my better paintings. But it was so much fun painting this Grimmskald miniature. Oh, by the way, if you do not know Grimmskald, I highly recommend you do check them out at Grimmskald.com. Although I did not show it on film, you could use washes, war paints, fanatic washes, or even speed paints thin down with speed paint medium to tone down your layering if you want to smoothen down your layering or tone down highlights that you feel are too much. Like I said, I enjoyed painting this miniature in this manner so much. However, I kinda struggled and I was so undecided on how to add colors within the armor parts that is reflected by the flame. I think the painting of the back part of the miniature is way better than the painting at the front part. If you are relatively new to miniature painting, I do not recommend this process. Like painting the ambient lighting and then adding the OSL effect, the warm yellows and oranges, and infusing the actual colors was a bit tricky. Key to painting in this manner, similar to painting non-metallic metal, is knowing how your source of light reacts to the surfaces or different surfaces of the figure or miniature. However, if you are an intermediate painter or like a really good painter, you may enjoy this exercise, this study. Like painting a miniature differently keeps the hobby a little bit more exciting. Oh, also notice the painting of the base. I kind of tried to have a reflection of the greenish water towards the caves in the base of the miniature. Although I find the front part a little bit too orange, I really, really enjoyed the painting of this miniature. Although the painting of this miniature was very linear, very straightforward, it's not the easiest way to paint OSL. However, you will enjoy trying this technique if you do so. That's it, Pansit. I hope you like this video. Do like, subscribe, and all that stuff because it helps the channel a lot. And until my next video, guys. Bye! If you like this video, do check out this other Warpings Fanatic videos.